In this grasshopper tutorial, uh, we're going to model a uh, geometric cake similar to the Dinara Costco uh, parametric and algorithmic cake as you just watched the video. So what we're going to do, as you can see, I can change the point attractor and produce different results. I can change the minimum and the maximum. And as you can see, it's going to be like this. Uh, we can just rotate it to zero. So this is the basic algorithm we're going to make. And you can see that we can also increase the height. And we can rotate the overall ball. And finally, we will have the results. So basically, this tutorial will help you to model something like the geometric cake of Dinara Costco in Grasshopper. And we're going to start right now. We can go to the vector section. And in the grid section, we've talked about this before in the, our previous tutorial, we can make a square grid. So in the grid section, I'm going to put the square grid into Grasshopper. Let's just use the bifocals plugin. And as you can see, this is in the XY plane because the default is the XY plane. The size of the cells, we can define this. And also the numbers in the X in the Y. So I'm going to give this the same number as the X and the Y. And now what we need is to make something similar to this. Let's just explain this and study the form a little bit. What we have to do is that to move this cell, okay, right up in the Z direction, then what we want to do is to scale it. So the first thing we have to do is to scale. And then what we can do is to rotate all of these cells at the center so it can be just simply rotated. And then we can assume that it's going to go somewhere like this. And then we can loft the results to produce those blocks. And then we're going to also define a point attractor. So I'm going to explain that. Let's just go to the cell section. As you can see, and I've explained this before, you can see it's 12 groups with 12 items in it, right? So this is basically in rows. So this is the first group, this is the second group, and we don't need these groups. Basically, the grid section is always producing the outputs uh, as groups. So I'm going to flatten this, and if you don't know about flattener graph, again, I'm going to put another tutorial up there, which you can watch and know more about the groups. So the next part is, is to move the cells a little bit up in the Z direction. So I'm going to put this in the Z direction, give this a number and give it a little bit height. So let's just decrease that. Okay. So the next step was to scale it. So we're going to scale these cells geometry to the geometry of the scale. You just type the SC to find the scale. The center is going to be the center of these cells. So a quick trick here, you can use the area if you want to calculate the centroids, okay? But it's a little bit uh, time consuming and it's a little bit slower because it's going to assume that this is a surface, it's going to find the area. If you have a flat cell like this and it's a simple geometry we can go to curve and use this polygon center also if you want to find the center so this is even faster and you can use this and it has a center for the vertices the center of the edges and center of the area uh, which is actually all the three is the same because it's a simple square but if it's a really complicated thing let's just assume it's something like this maybe the center of the area let me just show you the center of the area, the center of the edges, and the vertices is going to be different. So this is another tip you can always use to make it faster, especially if you have a flat polygon and you don't need the area. So let's just go with the center of the vertices, turn this off, and turn also the movement off. So now you can see that we have moved this, and we can just scale this with a number uh, between 0 and 1 if we want to make this smaller and bigger, okay? but we're going to connect that uh, later to a point attractor. So the next part is to uh, rotate all of these cells at the center of the cells, okay? So again, we need a rotation, and I'm going to use the rotate axis. Okay, excuse me, we're going to use the rotate 3D because we can simply just give a point and Z axis 
to rotate all of these around the z-axis. So I'm going to use the rotate 3D and we're going to rotate these cells. The center is important, we have to find it. So it's basically the center of this big square we have here. And what I'm going to do is to go to the surface section, use this bounding box tool and connect the cells to it. What is going to happen is going to find the bounding box for each of these cells. Right click and use the union box to find a united bounding box for this, which is actually what we want. This time we have to use an area. So remember, if it's a polygon, you can use it. If not, you have to use the area. Okay, we give this centroid to the center. The axis is a Z. And now we have to go to the angle. We have talked about this. We have to right click and use the degrees. Now we can give a number between 0 and maybe 180 degrees and rotate these, right? Okay, we can turn the scale off and here we have also a rotation. Okay, let's just finish this and then go to the point attractor which we can uh, control this with a different scaling thing. Okay, now what we have to do is to loft this cell with this cell, right? And we have it here. Let's just connect a cell of curve to this. And bring it up here, okay. And we have also another cell, which is this one. Now we want to loft these two set together. If you just connect a loft to this and use the shift key, shift key to connect them, what's going to happen is going to put them into a group and connect it like this, right? and then come up and again so this is wrong whenever you have two set of groups of curves three or whatever layers you have what you have to do is really simple you have to just graft this each of these groups let me show you with a curve what's going to happen is going to make the groups two by two so we're saying that we want to loft these two and again these two and so on so remember if we had a third group we can just graph this one, and if I just put this into another 3 uh, in a curve, you can see it's going to be n equals to 3. It's going to loft these 3 together, okay? Let's just connect this to the loft, and we're good to go. And if we want to make this a closed loft, to do is to go to the surface and use a cap to cap the holes. The top and the bottom, and we can bake this, okay? This is the first step so you can see that we have them all in solid. So the last trick in this tutorial is to, let's just turn everything off, is to just scale them instead of having the scale right here, okay? We don't want all of them to be one number. We want to be we want to change them based on a point. So now we're going to go to the point attractor. Let's just turn this off, the loft disable this so you can see those curves and work with the so it's faster okay because if i just turn on the loft it's going to be slow and we don't see the results so what i want to do is to put a point attractor on, on the canvas so let's just set a point this is a point attractor we're going to play with and what we want to do is to find the distance between the center of the cells down here so again we have to use the polygon center of the cells down there and what we have to do is to find the distance between the point attractor and these points simply by using a distance okay if you want to have multiple point attractors we have talked this in the a grasshopper course power course lesson you can watch the course if you want and some tutorials we have talked about this so if you want uh, to know more about point curve image attractor you can go to the course so let's just find the distance between these two so we are calculating the distance between the centroids of these cells to that point attractor okay and we have this distance so the problem here is this number the distance is a little bit big for scaling and we have to put these numbers if i give this to the scale factor what will happen is that's going to make them all big right we had a number between zero and one let's just zoom in so what we have to do is to convert them 
So assume that the 28 is going to be something like maybe 0 0.2. Uh, 57 is maybe something like 0 0.9. We have to scale these numbers and we can use the remap plus which we have in our website. You can download it or you can have to make the remap numbers. I'm going to make this time for the remap numbers so you can also understand how remap works. So let's just type remap numbers which is actually the remap numbers of grasshopper we give the value it says that what is the source domain it means that these numbers are between what i guess it's maybe between 20 to maybe 70 i don't know but the source is this one right and the target is what we want to make it so if you want to make the remap plus we can simply go to the math and use this bounds and connect it to the distance. Now it's going to say it's between, okay, it was smaller than we thought. It's 1.7 to 58. So this is the source target, the source domain, and then we have the target, which we have to make. So I've just compressed that into a remap plus. If you want to, you can make and download that remap plus from our website. We have to make a target. So I'm going to use a construct domain. and say that we want to make the target domain between these two numbers the smallest scale is 0 0.2 and the maximum 0 0.8 this is the minimum and the maximum we can just bring this a little bit forward and give this to the factor here we go let's just turn everything off and you can see that's going to affect those scales right so you can also change the minimum and the maximum right here and see that this is affecting the results so now it's actually finished we can just turn on the enabled and have the results and bake the solids so this is how you can make that dinara costco cake the geometric cake in grasshopper really easy just have to know about the point attractor we can really play with the point attractor give it graphs and advanced distribution of the number instead of just changing it between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 and you can also watch the graph mapper tutorial we'll put it up here if you want to make crazy things with that graph things okay so this is the way you can make the cake in grasshopper thanks for watching remember to subscribe uh, like this video and comment on it. Your comments is going to help this video. So thanks and see you next time.